Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to share with you today um, about um, peace offering. What's the peace offering? Jesus Christ shed his uh, sinless blood to reconcile the whole world to God. Whosoever believes in Jesus, he want to be he want to reconcile every individual, every individual living in the world right now. Christ Jesus who suffered all kinds of hardship like the fiery ovens and uh, shriveled up to barbecues on uh, iron plates through meat offering and became the propitiatory shatry sacrifice of Christ, the only sinless God in heaven and on earth, so that all people of the world who believe in him could be reconciled to God by shedding his blood. God who saw the people of the whole world living in sin and death and curses, even on those who did not commit sins, just like Adam's transgression from Adam to Moses, and had pity on those who were created in his image and his likeness, knowing that only his only begotten son would become a man and have no hope unless his blood was shed, wanted his only begotten son to become a man and shed blood like a cow, and like a sheep, and like a goat, so that he might be reconciled to himself. Apostle Paul spoke of this love of God. He said, saying, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for the righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die, but God commanded his love toward us in death while we were yet sinners while we were yet sinners Christ died for us all the only way for all who were born into the world as sinners because of Adam's sin to be reconciled to God is to receive the Holy Spirit and establish the kingdom of God in themselves by believing in and receiving Christ Jesus John the Baptist said, that's why we talk about, he testified of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. He said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. That means Jesus Christ not only forgives sin, but also take away sin of the world. The Apostle Paul said to the Hebrews, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of go goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling and unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That means the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, cleans our sins rooted in human conscience. Amazing. Apostle Paul also testified of the sin taking away blood of Christ. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance of again made of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body as thou prepared, prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, 
thou hast had no pleasure in the Old Testament, you know, days, right? Uh, all the offerings, offerings of animals, he doesn't please for that. Then said, I law, I come, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above one, he said, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had this pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. All the offerings, you know, offered by the law cannot please God. Yeah, Christ Jesus, who was born into the world, spoke himself, but being the propitiation for the whole world in order to reconcile himself to God the Father. You know this John 14, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is talk about peace offering of Jesus Christ. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but receive everlasting life. Whosoever believe in Jesus Christ have Holy Spirit within them, that is the evidence he has a relationship peacefully with God. Concerning the man who believed in his only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, and received the forgiveness of sins and received the Holy Spirit, Paul testified, saying, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand. I rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work is patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope makes not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Jesus said, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. He means that whosoever believes in himself and is reconciled to God through the blood of Christ should preach the gospel to others so that they may be reconciled to God through faith in Christ Jesus and have their, their sins forgiven also. That's why Apostle Paul testified of this. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are in the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Yeah, God made Jesus Christ sin for us. To have peace with us. Who know, who know no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yeah, yes. But believing in the blood of Christ Jesus, we are reconciled to God and everlasting peace. Shalom, right? That the world has never known. In other words, Christians who are believing in Shalom will have the glory of being prized at Christ's judgment seat as a 
propitiatory sacrifice when they take up the cross and follow the Lord, denying themselves in the midst of Christ's fury and iron-like suffering. The Apostle Paul testified of Christ's judgment seat. For all Christians, even the saved, they passed through judgment seat to be judged for what they've done in the world with their body. We are confident, I say, and are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and every man may receive the things done in his body. In his body. Whatever we done with our body, even the Christian, we, we must be judged, you know, of what we have done. According to that, he has done. Whether it is it be good or bad, Christ Jesus himself said of this, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 13, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. Yeah, it is very important. Even though you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have to pass through judgment seat of Christ. Even though we are not judged because we believe in Jesus Christ already, we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. But what we have done with our body in the world must be judged, good or bad. It's a very important message, but unfortunately, many Christians are not familiar with that judgment seat of Christ. I bless all of you, remembering judgment seat of Christ, even though you are saved, to be ready to meet the Lord, waiting for reward. In the name of Lord Jesus, I bless all of you. Amen.